Welcome to this halftime Halloween special of Time Out. I'm Kevin Flaherty alongside Nathan Newbar and Tommy Moe. Let's get into it. Let's start with NFL and Thursday Night Football. What are your thoughts? What a game. What a game, ladies and gentlemen. Packers, Cardinals, who are the top teams in the NFC? Battling out. Packers finally got the edge. You know I got to represent. Go Pack Go, baby. Yeah. Big side, win side, for us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you off right there. <laughs> side note, that is not a Halloween costume. I thought we were doing, you know, this whole Halloween bit, and you guys are both wearing football jerseys. Like, I could have brought my Justin Jefferson jersey, but no. You, know. you got to represent. After that win, I mean, come on. You got to think about it for a second. Packers, Cardinals, Rodgers missing, Devontae Adams, MVS, Alan Lazard. You got Jair out, Zadarius Smith out. All your, basically your top five star players, besides Aaron Rodgers, all gone. And we still managed to beat the undefeated Cardinals. Unbelievable game. Yeah, truth be told, I could not have cared less who won that game. But, man, looking back, I really wish A.J. Green turned around and caught that ball. Speaking solely from the Vikings perspective, I mean, now you got the Packers really leading the way at 7-1. and one. The NFC North is looking kind of locked in in their favor. You know, the Vikings still got two chances to, uh, to beat them and tie things up, say if they went out in some magical hypothetical scenario yeah but, I feel that I mean I feel that K1 is he didn't I mean he played okay yeah I mean he had 275 yards but no those touchdowns. two picks though and no, no touchdowns, touchdowns and two picks the one pick wasn't his fault I mean actually both picks weren't really his fault but yeah the one pick AJ Green you gotta know the play you no, have to know the play the, he, for, I don't think he I thought he's a run I think for a Thursday night game in the middle of the week this definitely has a bigger impact on the NFL going forward oh yeah they, Knocks they, out the Cardinals from being you know the consensus number one overall team and now you're giving an argument for the Packers, who everyone thought was going to, including myself, I thought they were going to be a complete disaster after mm -hmm. that 38-3 to loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Saints. yeah, I mean, you think about it for a second. Cardinals, Cardinals have been just absolutely demolishing every single team that they play. Packers come in, we can't, and I just think it shows how, how dominant they are and how they're going to be such a great season. All right, so we're going to start with picks of Week 8. We got the Panthers-Falcons. I mean, I got to go Panthers. You can't, I mean... If you go Pan, if you go Falcons, I mean, what's? Oh, actually, you know what? I might go Falcons. Actually, Kyle Pitts is playing out of his mind right now. Yeah, Kyle, Kyle Pitts, Pitts is playing well. Found it in London, and then now he's playing good. I gotta go Falcons. Right. The Panthers have been kind of a little shaky after that three-no start. They almost came back against the Vikings last week. I think that was just more of the Vikings making mistakes there. I'm gonna go Falcons. And yeah, plus their run real. game isn't. They don't have Christian McCaffrey still, so yeah, absolutely. I yeah, gotta go. They're, with the they're, they're weak right now, and the Falcons are got some roll, got some got some momentum. So I think I go Falcons too. So. All right, so Titans, Colts, the NFC South division I mean, leaders. This could kind of set the tone. You for, can't not go Titans. They're, they have been playing some of the best ball I've seen in the last, what, 10 years from the Titans? Derrick Henry is not human. He's not human. I, I have think, to go Titans. I think the Colts defense steps up and Jonathan Taylor has a better day. Wow. Jonathan nope. Taylor, he might not be putting up the numbers better than Derrick Henry has, but I think the just better overall impact for the team is Jonathan Taylor. I think Carson Wentz is going to be able to go against this Titans defense that has shown some signs of not yeah. being the best that there is. But I'm going to take the underdog here and go Colts. Okay. One, I have one. the Titans, mm -hmm. Derrick Henry. I mean, you can't But Michael Pittman, I love him. He's, he's he pretty good. He is having a good. He's good. Yeah, he's I, good. I agree with that. All right, uh, Dolphins, Bills. I mean, I don't think we need to talk about this. No. It's Bills. It's Bills. The yeah, Dolphins are the worst team in the NFL. Jaguars are officially better than them. There, there's no <laughs> doubt. I don't know about that. but it's like, Bills. <laughs> Moving on. But it's Bills. Bills. It's Bills. I mean, uh, it's Bengals, Jets. I got Joey B in the Bengals. Oh, yeah. I, I got Joey I, B. I was literally thinking about myself. I was like, the Bengals are bad, the Jets are bad. But then I realized that the Bengals are having one of the best seasons they've had in God knows how long. If so, you I mean, want, I have to go Bengals, I would say, too. If you want to quote me on this, I back all the way on week one after that week one win against the Vikings, I said the Bengals were the best team in the AFC North, and everyone called me crazy. And now they're playing like it. I, I, if I was disagreeing with you, i take that back. The Bengals are the best team in the AFC North. And 100%. that's no question. Bengals Undopia. are the best team in the AFC North. Yeah. All right. Staying in the AFC North with that talk. Steelers, Browns, who you got? This is a tough game. Oh. I only reason I think that if the Browns didn't have Chubb back, I think that they would have lost. But I, since they do, they're just gonna pound that run game. And I, even though their quarterback situation is abysmal at like at at the very least, like it's it's Browns. They gotta win. They're gonna I, win this game. I think the front seven for the Cleveland Browns will do enough to slow down Najee Harris. I mean, the Browns proved themselves last week able to win a tough, gritty game. In terrible conditions against the Broncos team that, I mean, they're not the best team in the NFL, but they're a solid they're team bad. that can be. They mm -hmm. can be any team in any week. Yeah. So I think the Browns are going to be able to edge this one out. Steelers are going to give them a fight, though. Great pick, you two. I got the Browns. Really? All right, next really? game: really? Eagles, Lions. Oh. Uh, I mean, this is a very like 
low tone game. No one's really talking about this. I probably would go. I think that the Lions get their win this week, though. You know, I, I think that's a very possible thing. I mean, the Lions are the best 0 17 in a 0 7 team in NFL history. Oh, 100 percent. They've they've lost so many tight games. They have to get a win. Eventually, I mean, they've so. lost back to back. They lost two games on long field goals. I got the Lions. I think they're going to be able to beat the Eagles team. They're still trying to find themselves. I mean, Jalen Hurts has been playing good, but I, I don't yeah. know. Uh, I got the Eagles. I think Jalen Hurts. I don't think he'll pull it out, but it'll be a close one. Yeah, it'll come down to a sure. field goal. For sure. All right, we're going to skip over to the Sunday night game in Minnesota. In Minnesota, the Cowboys versus the Vikings. I, I'm i sorry, Newport. I can't go away from the Cowboys right now. They're playing unbelievable football, and I'm, Kirk Cousins isn't cutting it. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Kirk Cousins is not. Kirk playing. Cousins is, one of, is a top five quarterback in the NFL this year based on numbers <laughs> alone. His no. team has kind of sold him a little bit. Wait, well, hold on. We need to go double frame. Man. Are you kidding me right now? Yes. I, I'm serious. Are you kidding me? I think Kirk, Kirk Cousins, Cousins is a top five quarterback in this Kyler Murray, right Tom Brady, Josh Allen, Aaron Rodgers, Dak Prescott. I can, the I can put Kirk on. in the exact same conversation as those. Yes, 100%. That's Anyways, unbelievable. I carrying, can't. Go, moving on, though, the Cowboys are 5-1, and one, but it's not a pretty 5-1. and one. They, They're winning games, sure, but they're games where you'd question them if they lost. So... Just to basically put things simply, I think the Vikings are I figured it out. They just come off their bye week. They've been two weeks to prepare for the Cowboys. This is it. This is their week. They're going to mm-hmm. make a statement on Sunday. I guess football. we'll find out soon I enough. got the boys. I got the boys. Yeah, All right, headed on to Gilmore football, their first playoff home game since 2018. What's it look like? Yeah, so we're at halftime now. Uh, this is filmed the day before, spoiler alert, so we don't know how it's going on in the first mm-hmm. half. But just a little preview, I mean – Gerard is not that bad of a football team. You know, 6-4, and four, they made the playoffs, which for Division 4, it's a lot harder to make the playoffs than it would be, say, for a Division 1 team because of just how many teams there are. Um, I, I mean, I don't know what to pick here because Gerard has a somewhat of a strong strength of schedule. Like, they were losing the games they should lose, but they're winning the games they should. So mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that I really feel that, you know, Gilmore, I feel like they can pull this out. You look at the rankings, Gilmore's 38 in D4. Gerard's 41, and in the standings of Region 13, which they're both in, Gilmore's 5, uh, <laughs> the other team is 12. I mean, it's just one of those things where it's just, it's going to be a tight game. They have Michael Palmer, who's the top running back for this Gerard offense, over 1,000 yards rushing and 12 touchdowns. I mean, come on. Right. And but then you, on the other side of the mind, ball, you have you C.J. John, Chuck Johnson, and you got uh, Mick Hopkins. Yeah, so they're, yeah I think good. that the Gilmore defense is actually one of the most underrated parts of their, of their I, Yeah, I think Gilmore's defense is going to show up. It Really, all that matters is who's going to fill that role of Andy Kafsik. Mm-hmm. Mick Hopkins did a great job last week against a weaker Trinity team, mm-hmm. but this is a real test for this offense because, I mean, Jay Kafsik can do it all. Mick can show he can do it all, but I think those two need to really work together and kind of diversify their looks if they want to beat this competitive you know, playoff caliber team. Yeah, Coach K's got a handful coming for them. I mean, Gerard, if you look at them, they're bigger dudes. They're they're they got some more muscle on them than the than previous teams that they played. Right. And I just feel that, you know, that's I feel that like another thing going back to that Thursday night game, Packers switched up their plays all the time. And I feel like Gilmore needs to do that. If Gilmore switches up their play calling, and if you, they really play smarter instead of harder, they're going to win this game. And then right. they're going to move on to the next Gilmore's round had that all year. They've been undersized on the line many, many a times. It's not a foreign territory for them. I think Gilmore comes out with the win on here. Hopefully the halftime score reflects that. Yeah, I agree. And, I mean, you can see on the, on the TV right here, you mean the scoreboard of the, of the Lancers right now, they've been – Pounding teams, beating teams, so like so many points scored. The only thing that they really been struggling was against Brush, and that was very. They were very oversized. Right. And, and they just have a couple. They many couple, injuries. Yeah. Many injuries. I mean, yep. Andy Kazik got hurt that game. So and if you want to take a look, I'm pretty out. sure mm-hmm. Brush. Are they a playoff team in Division Two? If you want to go check I, that out. I believe I so. Believe yeah. they are. Okay. I believe they are. Yeah. So I mean, they're they've, they're both their losses came against playoff teams in higher divisions. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how many signature wins Gilmore really has. To be completely honest, I mean, I guess the university school one was a solid one. They played a tough schedule for being one and seven. Plus, they had some whole issues with like games getting canceled because of all their stuff. Yeah, they were time. struggling throughout their entire year. So, I mean, it's just one of those things where I feel that it's gonna be a tight game. Coach K's got to bring up a go-to game plan. The players got to be ready to go. They're gonna be ready to go. It's gonna be an awesome Saturday afternoon, and I'm so excited to go see Gilmore go get a win. Yep, I am too. All right, uh, thanks for joining us on this halftime special and Halloween special of timeout. Now back to the field for the second half of play.